How long has it been since I last did a video? How long? And I'm past deadline? Oh, Junior's gonna kill me. Just roll the thing. What up, everyone? Old Buddy Ben with that hashtag show.com. As always, my presence today is brought to you by the fine folks over at Neft Vodka, reminding you to please drink responsibly, as well as everybody over at toink.com. I recently had the privilege of attending a press conference via Zoom with the creative arts team behind Apple TV's hit sports comedy, Ted Lasso. If you haven't had the chance to watch Ted Lasso yet, I highly recommend it. It's one of my favorite programs. The presser lasted about an hour and a half, and you can read all about it right here on that hashtag show.com. But I took the time to distill it down to some tasty morsels and provide you a video of some highlights from the behind the scenes action of the creative arts team. We start off with production designer Paul Cripps, who talked about all the development that went into really creating the world of AFC Richmond Football Club, the team that the show centers around. Take a look. We originally were going to use Crystal Palace uh, we were going to use their stadium to film the football matches, uh, which is Selhurst Park. So that kind of led on to the colour scheme for the team because Crystal Palace play in red and blue. They have a lot of red and blue seats in their stadium. So we felt it, it was best to kind of link to their colours with the Richmond team in order to have less to work to do in terms of using the stadium so we could fit in. Um, so I basically started with the dressing room and Ted's office uh, as, a, as a kind of core bit of the set and then moved out from there. The whole of the training center is kind of one set with inter, interlocking rooms so that you can move between, between rooms without cutting. Uh, it's like a composite set because when I read the original script, it felt very West Wing in that a lot of the conversations were happening, walking down corridors uh, and between rooms. So I wanted to give the, the camera the opportunity to move between different rooms in the set without having to cut. So all those kind of training center rooms are, are interlinked to give kind of a smooth passage. I kind of took a, a little bit of a bold decision to make um, all the lighting, you know, work from the ceiling, from the ceiling lights rather than have windows. The whole training center is supposed to be built within the stand of the stadium. So, uh, and then we could really use the space in the studio because we didn't have to have windows and backings, uh, but it meant all the lighting had to come from the intrinsic lighting of the spaces themselves. So we, we made a feature of the ceiling and the ceiling lights which luckily the, the DAPs, the cameramen took on board and really kind of went for. So it was creating a space where the camera and the actors could all work um, 360 degrees um, and, and kind of use the link between the locker room and Ted's office and see views through and see people in different spaces and then move through to them. Next up, we have casting director Theo Park talking about breakout character Danny Rojas and how little known Mexican actor Cristo Fernandez landed the memorable role. Well, that was a really interesting story actually because in, uh, um, in, the, in the original script, um, the Jamie Tart character played by Phil Dunster was called Danny Rojas and Danny, he was the arrogant star player, Trixie, um, with attitude and but he but they wanted him to be from South America um, a Hispanic Latino actor and we searched far and wide we searched I, I searched here in the UK and Europe and then they had someone in America looking in America and we just couldn't find someone right for the part Phil Dunster was right for the part but he was British so in that big search for the Danny what was called Danny Rojas um, we got this tape from this amazing guy Cristo Fernandez who actually used to be a pro footballer in Guadalajara Mexico but happened to have done a year's training in acting in the UK and retained a UK agent who I knew of and so through them we got this self-tape and we were like who is this guy he's not right for Danny Rojas but because he's so exuberant and fun and sweet and nice where we didn't we want to kind of wanted the opposite um but that you know that 
what happened with him was that, that we everyone saw this tape and they're, they're like, okay, so he's not Danny Rojas, but we've got to get him in this. We've got to get this. And so what they did was they rewrote the whole script and we made Phil Dunster, Jamie Tart, British. And then we created this whole <laughs> new character now called Danny Rojas. And there's, that's your Cristo Fernandez. And that's all down to just the genius of, of two different actors who just outshone everybody else that we auditioned, getting you know the parts written around them. Next up, music supervisor Tony Von Pivu, whose name I'm sure I butchered, talks about one of the most iconic scenes from season one and everything that he had to go through to get Disney to approve use of one of their biggest hits for an Apple TV show. Uh, Let It Go was a song that was initially chosen. And, um, you know, with, with it being a Disney catalog song, they honestly did, you know, they're very particular about, you know, using their songs and especially in other shows that are not Disney. Um, so that was one that was kind of like iffy until we shot it and got to show them. But initially we got in a denial on that song. So we had to shoot, um, we had to shoot that song and an alternate version because we didn't know if we were going to be able to clear or get uh, an approval on Frozen. But what happened was like, you know, <clears throat> as much information as we could provide from the script of how the song is not going to be butchered, you know, the song is going to, she's an amazing singer and uh, there's no like, um, there's no, um, you know, there's no negativity around the song. Um, once we shot it, I was able to send it to them and get that denial reversed. So we ended up using the right song for that spot. Um, and that was, that was kind of the situation where it was like, you know, they, they pointed to her singing um, these, these frozen songs to her, to her goddaughter earlier in, in that episode. So it was pivotal to try and keep that and make sure that we, you know, th that we got that win. Um, and then we had a backup song that we shot just in case uh, <laughs> because we didn't know like if that was actually going to get reversed or not. Um, and that song was I Will Survive. So it was equally as good of a song. Um, but for that moment, that was something that Jason really wanted and we were able to get that done. Here, editors Melissa McCoy and AJ Catiline talk about the fine tuning it takes to edit a show like Ted Lasso, especially when so much improv and spur of the moment comedy happens right on set. Our first season was a lot of exploration. I think we quite, we all didn't, nobody knew really what the show was quite yet. And so um, our, our first cuts were always like 40 minutes. And then we were talking about, uh, you know, do we get it down to a traditional comedy time of like 28 minutes? And we never could get there because it just didn't feel right to cut so much of the show. But yeah, we did. Um, I, a lot of times I would be, uh, you know, RIP to my favorite jokes, but J like to Jason's, uh, you know, vision for the show, he has such a vision for the show. And sometimes we would cut really funny things, but he would be like, this isn't serving the story or the character, or I don't think Ted would, this would be in Ted's, you know, character to do something like this. And, you know, it would be something we'd all get a laugh out of, but he would, it wouldn't, I don't think it would have been true to the story or the show or the character. And he would, Ruthless, doesn't have to be there. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's uh, a joy when you're working with a great improv actor like Jason. I mean, they have great writers and they'll write a great script, but they'll always have an option for one or two alts. And instinctively, I think we want to try the script first because that's what they've spent time writing. So we put that joke in, but Jason's always you know, asking, what other alts do we have here? And I will show him things. And it's, it's fun to go through different choices like you know, Higgins had so many different names for his cat that we could have gone with. I think we settled with Cindy Clawford. Again, none of this stuff was in the script, so they come up with it uh, uh, in the in the moment. Um, but you know, to Mel's point, Jason, you know, is going more for the arts of the characters. So sometimes we cut a joke because it doesn't serve the story, but also we will add a joke that might be funny that we that could have been cut, but we add it because it gets us to a reaction. Um, in 106 when the team is having the meeting and that camera is spinning around the, the garbage can that they're all sacrificing things. Um, there was a, you know, we had a bunch of choices in there, but one of the team players you know, sacrificed some sand from a beach. And he's like, but I was on the beach with a supermodel and he was all missing it. And then we only included that joke just to get to the look of, Re of Rebecca 
kind of rolling her eyes at this um, kind of, you know, she, she's, she's laughing at misogyny at that point is the way she's being treated in, in the press. So, so that was an example of adding a joke to get to a reaction. Finally, I've got some awesome footage to show you guys while we listen to VFX supervisor Lawson Deming talk about the plethora of digital effects that go into creating the world of AFC Richmond Football Club, which does not exist in real life. Take a look. So yeah, one of the things that that I'm sort of pleased that people don't realize is how much visual effects uh, we did for these uh, games. Aside from, I think, a couple shots, none of these games were shot in a real stadium. They were all shot on a practice field. Uh, and we created a fully digital version of basically Selhurst Park, fully CG version of the stadium, and then mostly CG crowd, some plate photography crowd to fill it. So you'll see in all these shots, essentially, you know, they're just playing on a, on a practice pitch. There's a minimal amount of green screen because once you're moving the camera around that much and you've got these big dynamic shots, there's just no way you can cover everything with, with green screen. So you see they, they put the green screen basically just where the uh, electronic uh, signage is kind of as a reference and then also just behind the goal because the net is very difficult to roto out but everything else is basically rotoed out. You see that we put our digital lighting fixtures in the same places as the practical lights so that all the natural flares that were coming into the shot when they shot it practically could essentially be replicated and, and sort of smoothed over with our, with our digital flares. So you see all the lights there casting big lens, lens reflections. In addition to the stadium itself, we have the people who in some cases were photographic people, but for the majority of the scenes were digi doubles. Each match is gonna have people rooting for both sides. And so you wanna have different parts of the stadium react differently uh, when things happen. So we had digi doubles that we had all this motion captured animation, in addition to again the photographic of uh, the digi doubles seated, standing, cheering, booing, and then in addition to assigning different wardrobe to them for their team colors, we could then control you know, who in what color clothing would cheer at a given time and would boo at a given time. And there we go, some of the most fun bits and highlights from the press conference with the Ted Lasso Creative Arts team. Thank you so much to everybody who made this possible. Be sure and check out Ted Lasso on Apple TV. If you've already seen it once, watch it again. If you've never seen it, what's wrong with you? As always, I'm old buddy Ben. This is that hashtag show.com. And the reason I'm drinking out of this red cup is because whenever Ben Cleaver shows up, it's always a party. Yeah!